In this video, we're gonna share with you some mistakes that other people have made moving here. So hopefully you won't make the same mistake when you move to the great state of Arizona. Stay tuned. What's up, it's Ryan Meeks with my home group real estate here in Arizona and thank you so much for watching the Escape to Arizona YouTube channel. So what I wanna to do today is just kinda of go through and I don't mean to make like a doom and gloom video but uh, there are a lot of things that, that people are not prepared for when they're making a move, especially when you're relocating to another state like Arizona or any other state for that matter. And uh, in this video, we're just gonna talk about some of those things and uh, give you a little bit of the experiences that I've had with them and hopefully it'll help you guys when you're making the move not make those mistakes. First and foremost, with Arizona, I find it's really a big mistake if you're not using an in-state lender and a, a lender that's here native to Arizona. And how do you even know how to get a good lender? Well, you talk to your realtor and you ask for a recommendation. It's always a good idea. Go on Google, look at their reviews, and they're not familiar with the Arizona purchase contract, and they're just not familiar with uh, time frames and the norms of uh, lending down here. So really helps to use an in-state lender. That's what I would recommend. If you haven't already chosen someone uh, from your home state, use somebody from Arizona. And another thing, I, when I moved here, I used uh, an out-of-state lender. I used Chase Bank, uh, my mortgage loan, loan rich, hey Joe, how you doing? So Joe's a good friend of mine and worked with my CPA and we came up with the numbers because I was self-employed that I, I needed to be at to uh, purchase the home down in Arizona. So that's how I did my loan. I would not have Joe work with me and then obviously, you know, it, it, it would just be rude to get a lender down here. So I used Joe through the whole process. He was great. Not saying your lender won't be great, but if you haven't already chosen a lender, get an in-state lender. It'll make things a lot easier and, and run much more smoothly. And this sounds kind of bad, but you know, plan for delays in your closing. At least be prepared. If there's any issues, it's better to be prepared than to not be prepared with all this stuff, right? So the old adage, um, you know, be prepared for the uh, unexpected. So yeah, definitely be prepared to not close on time. Let's say that you're supposed to close on a Thursday. Well, or let's say you're supposed to close on a Friday. And that brings me to another point. Don't close on Fridays. Although I have closed on Fridays for some clients in the past, gonna try to avoid it. And, and here's why. Um, what could happen is let's say you're in another state and you have a notary that's gonna come to your house and have you sign all the documents. Well, if that notary can't find your house or if that notary gets lost or if you live out in the boonies and they just can't make it, and that's happened before. I've had some clients in Minnesota where the notary just couldn't make it to their home that night and uh, unfortunately the, the closing was delayed like a few days. But anyways, it wasn't a big deal on all parties because they were leasing back. But uh, what could also happen is if that notary goes to your home and you sign and then the notary sends the prepaid package FedEx to uh, to title. What if that gets you know lost, or what if it gets delayed? So that will definitely postpone your closing. And then if you planned on getting there Friday or Saturday, you know now you're not going to be able to take possession until Monday because you have to wait till that property records. So that's very important. Make sure that you plan for the what if scenario. If you've purchased new construction, it's very important to plan for delays with the home build as well. Now, we all know what's going on with the supply chain things. I can go over that with you, but it's pretty obvious. We've heard the president talk about it. We've heard uh, everybody talk about supply chain shortages. We're getting delayed maybe two, three months. I have a client that was supposed to close in October. Now we're looking to March and he actually had kind of pre-sold his home. He was gonna lease it back from these clients, but um, they, they just pulled out because they said, hey, you know, it's getting too crazy with your, your new build. So let's, uh, let's just put a pause on that, pump the brakes a little bit. So uh, my client that's now moving into the new build is, you know, pretty much delayed. So, which is fine. I told him, hey, you stay in your house anyways. Your house is gonna go up in the next five months. So don't pre-sell it. He was gonna sell the house right away. So I think that'll be a good thing. I think it'll be a good thing for him. So he can stay in there a little bit longer, make some more money and uh, go from there. Yeah, new construction, they're saying I think now a year, and of course when you sign that new construction contract, it's really a uh, two year, they have up to a two year window to, uh, to build that house. So something to keep in mind. If it's 12 months, plan on 14 months. And hey, if it gets done early, awesome. And once again, don't close on a Friday uh, because what happens if you close on a Friday is if something gets delayed, 
then you're pushing things over to Monday. It's not a good outcome for anybody if these closings get delayed three days instead of one day. Expect delays from the movers. I've seen some clients that have moved in and not get their possessions until two weeks after they've been in the house. So that's kind of an extreme case. Uh, just be prepared, go, you know, get a few air mattresses. Um, and that's something that obviously you can kind of do the night of, but always good to have that in the back of your head that the <laughs> movers may not be on time. Now, it's not something you want to wish for, but uh, it's something you hope doesn't happen. But just be prepared if the movers are taking their sweet time. Leave what you don't need at your old house. Now, I don't mean leave it there for the new buyers to deal with, but sell it or just throw it in the trash because you can come out here and buy new furniture. We have plenty of furniture stores, some very expensive furniture stores and some cheaper, less expensive furniture stores. So if you're finding that you're just sick of that old frame on that uh, king size bed, leave it home, sell it, give it away to somebody in need and uh, come out here and buy some furniture because the less you bring, the less expensive it's gonna be and the less chance that it will be damaged in transit. Don't be too picky. Now, there's just not that much inventory and there's a lot of people out here still looking to move to Arizona. People are still looking to escape California. A lot of people still coming from Washington, Oregon. So, hey, if you find a house that's like has seven out of your 10 must haves, that's a good purchase, okay? You're not gonna find anything with 10 out of 10. And if you do, there's gonna be eight other people lined up right next to you that have all those criteria and realize that, hey, this hits home on everything that we want. If you find that home with seven out of 10, take it right now, build some equity. And if you're not happy there in two, three years, or if you wanna to move to a different part of the neighborhood, put some TLC into it and go ahead and sell that house. And you can purchase something with that equity that you've built to actually match the property you're gonna be purchasing. Now this is one that's really important. I do have a lot of clients that come here and rent first. I don't really try to talk people out of it just because I'm not that crazy of a salesman, but I think it's important that if you're gonna make the move out here, do or die, like just do it. Purchase a house because since 2013, prices have been rising. And I had a client, one of, you know, right when coronavirus hit, they came out from California and I've said this in some other videos and they got really just turned off by the whole process. They were being outbid, um, you know, people going over appraised value, et cetera. And on their first offer, they just said, you know what, we're out. The husband's like, we're done. We're not gonna do this. We're gonna wait till the market settles down. Well, that was what, in April of 2020. Now prices have probably literally gone up, uh, say like 40%. So that $450,000 house that he was gonna purchase right now, or that he was gonna purchase back in 2020, it's probably gone up to, uh, I'd say like 600,000 easily. So, I mean, unless he saved $150,000, it's gonna be very difficult uh, to find another house like that to purchase. So please, if you move here, uh, just, just do it. And after a year, if you're not happy, you can sell the house, take the equity, move somewhere else, and uh, move on with life. But I really think it's important if you're gonna move here, uh, purchase the home and if you're looking for a good area, watch all my YouTube videos. And another thing you can do is just reach out to a local realtor like myself and we can give you an idea of you know what neighborhoods might fit best for you and your situation. So hey, hope to see you on the next one. And if you love this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Where is that at? Somewhere over here. And uh, feel free to reach out if I can help you guys in any way. We'll see you on the next one.